Hello beautiful people, welcome and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our Applied Mechanics lessons. On today's video, on this specific video, I want us to have a little chat about centroids. And I know we kind of have exhausted the topic of centroids, but I realized when paging back that there is a small little part that I didn't actually touch. What happens when you have a shape within a shape? Let's say this is a hole. What happens then? Let's say everything is completely symmetrical. Okay, we'll pretend it's symmetrical. What happens in that instance? Let's give this dimensions. Let's say it's 100 by 100. What actually happens in an instance like that? Because previously we dealt with an I section and it was quite simple because you just needed to consider the shapes that are there, but believe it or not, there are people who still manage to confuse themselves by adding stuff here where they actually don't belong. But we are not dwelling on the past. Today, I want to know what happens in an instance like this where you need to calculate the centroid, but there's a shape within a shape, right? So remember the steps for calculating your centroids. You are going to calculate your areas. Then you're going to calculate your bar x. Then you're going to multiply those to get your area bar x then you're going to calculate your bar y then you're going to multiply these to get your area bar y it's very straightforward when it's just straightforward shapes you take area one take area two bar x bar x area y um area x area x then bar y bar y area y area y and then you get um your centroid but now i want us to tackle a little example where you may have a shape within a shape right so remember we use the method of the table i think it's just easier to record your data on the table part i mean of course it's not the only way there are like a million ways to kill a cat and if you pr prefer to strangle it then that's on you Right, so we'll use our square as shape one and the hollow circle as our shape two. And we'll say this has a, we'll give it a diameter of 50. Okay, so area one, 100 by 100. First area will be 100 by 100. That's equals to 10,000. One, two, three, four. There we go. That's the first area. So that's the first one. Then the second one is a hole. What happens here? It's a hole. It still exists. It's just that now it'll be negative. Okay? So remember the area of your circle would be pi r squared. Okay? So our radius would be, if our diameter is 50, our radius would be 25. So pi 25 pi r squared. And it's a negative. 1963.495. Okay, then now we need to look at our bar x. The bar x of a square and of the circle. Remember, you just need to appoint a reference point. I normally use the far left and the very bottom. So from this point to the middle of your square is 50. From this point to the middle of your circle as well, 50. Then next you are essentially plug and playing. So 10 grand times 50 gives you 500,000. 1963.495 times 50. I really just like numbers like this, but anyway, 174.75. Then next, we're going to look for bar y, right? We're taking it from the very bottom. Bar y from the very bottom to the middle of the square, and the circle will also be 50. So in this very rare occurrence, your ax and your ay are exactly the same. The only difference, though, is the fact that one is negative and one is positive. So remember, this area here was negative. So your area bar x and your area bar y is negative. Then now we're trying to find totals. So 
So 10,000 minus that gives you 8036.505. We don't need this total here. 500,000 minus 98, 174.75. You get 4018.25. For both of them I think in a test on exam if I ever got the exact same answer for both of them like this I would be very suspicious but the only reason why they're the same is because our uh, diagram has the has equal dimensions in both the X and the Y and it is symmetrical in both the X and the Y so now our central about the X a X over the sum of the area. So we have four zero one eight two five point two five divided by eight zero three six point five oh five. I get fifty here. And remember they're exactly the same so you would still be expected to write this whole shebang on the side for your y bar but essentially your centroid would be 50 for your y as well and this is because from here it is completely symmetrical your centroid is right in the middle there even if there's a hole that is essentially looks like it takes away from where the centroid should be, but it actually doesn't. If anyone has any questions, you can leave a comment or you can email me. I'm not really fussy, whichever method works best for you. I hope this was clear, but if it was not, you know what to do. Adios.